a 3D printer. Now this belongs to my friend's son and he asked uh, if I'd be to have a look at it for him. And what he said was that uh, the Z axis, the part that raises and lowers the, uh, the print head here isn't moving. The uh, X and Y is working okay, but the uh, Z axis isn't. And what he said he's tried, he said he's tried swapping some of the wires over here and the fault seems on the circuit board. Right, well, I've managed to uh, fit it on the uh, the blue mat of sorts. Uh, <laughs> I've had to raise my camera up a fair bit just so I can uh, get it on the bench. Uh, right, so what have we got here then? Looks like we've got a, a box. Uh, Full of parts here, and screws and bits and pieces. I think, uh, yeah, that's part of the uh, extrude of it, which is uh, missing off uh, this bit here. You might just be able to see on the bottom of the screen there. I think that's what uh, that part is. So, what's he done with this then? Let's see, that's the uh, fan, and this is the circuit board here with some bits and pieces and wires unplugged everywhere oh, there's a rare uh, power wire just uh, floating about in there as well by the look of it right so we've got uh, negative and positive on the bottom here but the black wire Seems to be going to the positive for some reason. I don't think that's right. Right, I was actually going to clean the screen on this because uh, it's uh, it's rather dusty. I think it's uh, sat on his top landing for months and he just never got around to uh, having a look at it. So now I know what he's tried so far was swapping some of the motors around. Um, so he swapped just to rule out it wasn't the actual motor that was at fault. He swapped the uh, extruder motor, which is uh, here, over with the uh, the motor that controls the uh, Z-axis that moves it up and down like that. So he swapped those two motors over, and the um, the platform raised and lowered when it was supposed to be squirting out filament. So we know the motor's okay. So the fault's definitely on the board. I think what we'll do, we'll just swap some of the, we'll swap these wires back the way they should be and try and work out where everything's supposed to be. I think he's just plugged stuff in willy nilly by the look of it. And so that's the power wires in. Right, and we need some way to insulate this board as well because uh, with it being metal on metal. It's going to short out, so I'm going to find something just to uh, put under the board there that's just going to insulate it. Alright, so I found a bit of cardboard that I've put underneath the uh, circuit board. And I've got the mains lead plugged in, so let's switch it on and see what it uh, does. Well, that fan should be going round all the time, and it's not. Uh, we've also got the bed temperature, seeing it's minus 14 degrees. So there's uh, definitely something not plugged in there correctly there. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch it back off. And try and work out what's uh, not plugged in correctly. A few moments later. Right, so I've got all the wires figured out now because uh, the temperature readings on the hot end and the bed are correct. So I'm just going to take a picture of the wires. Just so uh, I know where they all go. Right. So let's see what it's actually doing then. Uh, if I go into control here and motion, I 
if it's not that is it prepare mark move access that's the one right so we'll try the x access Right, so that one's working. We'll try the Y axis. Or Z, sorry. Well, Z's moving the extruder. So hold on. Tell you what, I'm gonna switch this off first. And we'll swap those cables back over. So Z is now going to Z and extruder is going to extruder. Move access right. And try X again. Okay. Y. Z. And that seems to be working. As it was the extruder that wasn't working. Extruder. Right. So this motor here should now be turning. And it isn't doing anything, it just seems to be in the locked position. So it's a problem with the extruder, not the actual uh, Z. Right, tell you what then, I'll switch it off again and we'll just swap these two motors over. And if I try the Z axis now, it should move the extrude that motor yes yeah I can see it moving there I'll try the other way yeah so that's moving both ways so the motor's fine So if we try the extruder now, this should raise and lower the platform. And it isn't doing anything. So it's a problem with the uh, extruder output. Right, now at least we know what the fault is. Let's uh, see if we can figure out why. Now I might take the circuit board out of this so we can have a look at it and do some measurements. So we've got the board out. So uh, let's zoom in and see if we can see anything. So this is where the extruder stepper motor gets uh, driven from and it looks like it's driven from this IC here uh, I've got a couple of uh, zero ohm resistors there 
which we could test then. Um, might be better to get the microscope in so I can get that one a bit even there, so we can get in a bit closer. So this is where the extrusion motor connects to, just this header here. And it looks like they've got a couple of uh, 1 ohm resistors just there and there. So I'll tell you what, we'll check those. Yeah. So they're okay. I've got three zero ohm resistors at the bottom there, so we'll just check those. And those seem okay. Now, I can't remember what all one C is, but it must be ten K. Right, so those seem okay. So, just looking at the uh, the main IC here, which is a uh, and at mega 128 there, I'm starting to tilt the board a bit so it's going out of focus a bit, so you actually see the uh, writing on it. So at mega 128 there, they're uh, commonly found in uh, Arduino boards. So it looks like we've got uh, two lines coming out of the chip there which uh, head over this direction, so they're probably going to that driver. And two lines coming out of the chip here, which uh, probably go over to this chip, because I would think, um, from what I understand, this chip here, the stepper driver, has two inputs. One's the um, direction. And the other one is the uh, signal to tell it to actually step a step. So if we, uh, let's see, go on this via here. And we should have continuity to uh, one of these pads up here. I'm not sure if it's that one. Or the one below it. Yeah, there we go. So that goes to there. And then if we try this pad, that'll probably go to the other pin, probably just here. And it does. So, all the components seem okay there. So either the I.O. is, uh, the I.O. lines have uh, gone, or the I.O. ports have gone on this chip here. Or more than likely this uh, stepper motor driver has failed. So I think uh, what we'll try and do is uh, see if we can get the uh, heatsink off it. So I'm just going to try and grab the heatsink. Let's try and uh, twist it a bit. I might need some uh, bigger pliers. There we go. Right, so that's the uh, driver chip there, which is in there. Uh, a 4988ET so I think I'll order one of those and then uh, we'll uh, fit it and see if that cures the problem so the uh, new driver chips have arrived so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some uh, flux around this chip here, I've already cleaned the uh, silicon stuff off that was around this area and put some uh, captain tape over this area just to try and uh, stop these capacitors from exploding so I'm going to try and heat the chip from this direction uh, I might actually bring the microscope in to do that and then uh, we'll remove this chip clean up the area and uh, replace it with the new one
Right, so that's the uh, old chip off. I'm just going to use some uh, solder wick and a little bit of flux just to clean up the uh, area. Now I'm just going to apply some uh, leaded solder. I'm just going to wick a little bit off out the uh, centre there. That should probably do. Right, let's get the uh, new chip on. Right, I'll just give those a quick uh, touch up with the iron I'm just going to uh, clean all the flux off now just with some uh, IPA and a cotton bud. Yeah I think that looks alright, I can't see any shorts or anything. Right, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use some uh, high temperature gasket sealant, which is like a silicon compound that I've got here. I'm just going to put a little bit uh, just on the top here. That should do. And we'll use that to uh, tear the heat sink back on top of the chip. So if I just get it on the end. And spread it around a bit. So I think that should uh, probably do. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. So that should be the uh, board all ready to put back in now, hopefully. And there's the uh, old chip that we've just removed. So let's get this board back in then. Right, so hopefully that should be uh, it all plugged in. So let's switch it on and see what it does. Well, it hasn't released any magic smoke, so that's a good thing. Let's see if... Uh, Oh, that one still works. Right. Right, well, oh, one more. Let's try the extrude oven. Once that stops. Nope, I've still got no output on the extruder. And that's after changing the uh, the chip. So why isn't it still working? What are we missing? Let's 
Let's just see if we're getting a voltage to uh is it that side of the capacitor or the other side? Maybe this side. Yes, we are. So we're getting power to the chip. I think the next thing is to uh, hook the scope up and we'll check what inputs we're getting to the chip. Because we don't seem to be getting any uh, output out of it. So are we getting any input into it? So I'm going to hook the scope up and we'll probe some of these uh, connections coming from the microcontroller here. And we'll see... Um, We'll see if the signals going to the chip are correct. Right, so I've got the uh, oscilloscope hooked up there now. And I'm just going to show you what I've found. So if I go into the Z axis, which we know is working. And if I get my probe. And the Z axis is controlled by the two pins on the microcontroller just here. So if I pick that pin. And then we'll turn it. Uh, move 10 you, you can see on the oscilloscope all the pulses being sent to the uh, the motor driver and the other pin that gets sent is the um, the direction so when you go up for instance it goes to 5 volts and when you go down it goes to 0 volts so that's how it actually changes the direction Right, so if I come out of this menu now and go on to the uh, extruder, I'm just going to move 10 millimeter, and the extruder output of the chip, or this pin here, is one of them. I'm just on it there now, and I'll try moving the extruder. And we're getting no output. I'm not getting any pulses or direction change on that pin. So I'll just try the next one. Uh, just double check I was on there properly. As you can see, we're not getting any change on that line. And the next one is this one here. I'm not getting any change in output on that pin either. So I'm not sure what's going on here at the moment. Might as well switch the scope off for the moment. And the printer. So I've got a bit uh, less background noise. So I'm not 100% what's going on. It's like the microcontroller here isn't giving out the signals to tell the uh, the stepper driver to actually move. I mean, I would have thought it would just be in the stepper driver blown. I mean, it could be that the stepper driver has blown and sent voltage back down these two lines and blown the microcontroller, which is a possibility. But I'm just wondering whether it's a problem with the uh, the firmware. Uh, or some setting somewhere maybe. So I've just been thinking about reflashing the uh, firmware on this and see if that makes any difference. Like you know, putting it back to the stock firmware and see if uh, if that works. And if that doesn't work, then obviously it must be the, uh, a problem with the uh, the main microcontroller. Right. So I've got a Arduino hooked up here. And I'm just busy uh, flashing some different firmware to the um, control board here via these cables. Right. Has it made any difference though? Nope, still don't have any output on the extruder.
So I've removed the board again now just to double check that uh, we're getting continuity from this chip to the motor driver. So if I go onto this pin here and it goes to about here. That one yeah. And the other one goes to this pin here. Now you see I've checked the soldering on this chip, all of that looks fine. So I'm not sure whether to try removing this chip now and see if we get any output on any of these pins. I mean we could try checking the resistance between, uh, let's say that motor driver and the chip and ground and between this motor driver inputs and ground just in case there's a short or something on this chip. I think we'll just try that, just go on at ohms. And find a suitable ground. So So we're getting about 470k on that pin and about 470k on that pin. So those two pins are the step and direction that go to this motor driver and these two pins just here and here go off to this motor driver so if I just measure those ones again we've got about 470k and on this one we've got about 470k so so there's no shorts on these two lines but they're just not giving any any signal out now you see we've just verified that with the scope by going onto those vias just here and here and we're not getting any signals out of those two pins. Right, so I've tried programming the board now with the uh, the original firmware, just in case. So we're not using the BL Touch firmware now. I've removed the chip, so we can uh, rule that out. And let's see if we get any output on this chip now. So this is with the original firmware and the chip removed and there's nothing happening on the scope and we'll just try the other pin which is this one here and obviously it's the same pin that goes here and we've got nothing on the scope and it's the same one that's here and no output so I would say that the uh, problems with the uh, Atmel chip here as well. So I think the driver chips sent voltage into the Atmel chip and blown it. Well, uh, if I just probe on, let's say, that pin there. And we'll just go back onto the other axis, which is the Z1, which is, this is connected to. And you can see there we're getting uh, spikes. And if I go on this one here, we can see there, that's the direction that's changing as I'm turning the knob there. So, no output on this chip, so we need to change that chip next. So it's been a couple of days since uh, I've looked at this now, and I've been uh, trying to obtain one of these chips here. And one of the suppliers that I use is, uh, say, stock unavailable. I did find one on eBay but it was about 30 odd pound and I was like what? And um, I think one of the other suppliers had them in stock but the time you added postage and everything on it's you know you are nearly at the price of an upgraded new 32-bit uh, board and this is only an 8-bit uh, board so I spoke to my friend's son and uh, we've agreed uh, that probably the best way forward with this now considering the uh, main process as at fault is uh, to actually uh, upgrade the board. So, I have ordered a one and it has just arrived. Let's get it out of its pocket and have a look. So 
So this one uh, has got different stepper drivers to uh, this one here. This is the uh, silent stepper driver, so they're uh, more quieter. Uh, it's got a 32-bit uh, ARM processor on it. I don't know, I'll just zoom down a bit so we can have a bit better look. It's uh, got a 32-bit uh, ARM processor on it, uh, as opposed to the 8-bit processor. It's got a built-in safety fuse. And if you notice, it doesn't have the uh, the header for programming uh, the microcontroller, because this version has got a bootloader in. You can actually just upgrade the firmware via a micro SD card now, and I think possibly via the USB as well. So we'll uh, fit this then, and then uh, hopefully get this back up and running for him. Right, I think we might have to rewire this uh, connector slightly because I think uh, ground and VCC are the other way around on this. So that wouldn't have been good if we just plugged that straight into there. So I'm just going to double check uh, the wiring on this uh, plug here and uh, then I'll be back. So I was right to uh, double check that because. Uh, these two pins I need swapped around right so that should just plug into this connector now and hopefully that should be it right let's uh, power it up Yeah, and there was power to the motor briefly there, because uh, it was solid, so... Okay, we'll check the other axes first. Oh yeah, it's silent, that as well. I move the Y. I've actually got the same printer as uh, this. I might actually upgrade my board after uh, hearing this. There's another one I've got, it's quite noisy. Uh, move the Z axis. Yeah, so that's uh, moving up and down as well. Right. And we'll try the extruder now. And I'll tell you what, I'll move the uh, move this down a bit first. So and then you should be able to see it a bit better as well. Well, it doesn't let you move it minus. So I'll do, kind of do it a bit manually there. Right. So we'll try the extruder now. Yes, it's turning. Yeah, and it's turning both ways. Right, I think we'll get uh, all this back together then, and then uh, we'll get it to print out something, I think. So after a bit of uh, configuration and bed leveling and adjustments and whatever, uh, it's uh, busy printing away there. It's been printing now for about 47 minutes. Uh, I've just got another camera set up there, just looking at the uh, print. 
So we're just printing uh, a 3D Benchy, which is a bit like the uh, Hello World of 3D printing. It's uh, just like a little test piece that uh, people normally print out just to test uh, printers, just in case you didn't know. So we'll come back to this once it's uh, a bit further on. Well, it's been going for an hour and 33 minutes now, so not much longer to go. Right, so we'll just let that cool down and then uh, we'll take it off the bed and have a look at it. So, the bed's nice and cool now. So this should just come off, and it has. So, there we go. A, uh, a little 3D printed boat. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with that though, but <laughs> anyway. Right, so... Not quite the fix that uh, I was uh, going for, but uh, I suppose a fix nonetheless. At least uh, you can use it now when it's all back up and working. Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.